We all saw what was going on in that House chamber this week. You know, the the comparison between what the Democrats were trying to do, which was, number one, get Hunter Biden to be able to testify publicly so everybody could hear it. I mean, like, why cherry pick stuff? But number two, showing that the hypocrisy of the GOP is alive and well in D.C. I mean, I don't know. How did you navigate that particular hearing? Because you're a lawyer, you're a member of Congress, and so you know what facts, evidence, and the law actually were. And I'm a representative. And so the first thing I did was take a step back and think, like, well, what do the people uh, I represent care about? And it's certainly not Republicans acting as Donald Trump's lawyer, you know, as the largest law firm in Washington, D.C., working for just one client. They want breathing room in their finances. They want their health care costs to come down. They want their kids to be safe at school from gun violence. And, and these guys, they're just an echo for Donald Trump. There, there's nothing that they do uh, that works to benefit anyone who's in need. And, and then I think about Donald Trump, and, and you listen to the grievances and what you played in the opening. It's just me, me, me. And I think what President Biden has to do is make it clear as we go to the next 10 months into November that this election for him is going to be about you and what you need in your life. So, you know, Congressman, at the beginning of your segment, we were talking about how you've got the judicial system, right? And you've got judges that are going to gatekeep and you've got juries that are going to sit there and make determinations because that's how a judicial system works. But then Donald Trump decides that it's not going to work for him in court. So he wants to go out. He wants to play the media, right? Or he wants to dispatch his House Republicans to be able to do his dirty deeds for him. We've seen him lose in court. He just got tagged with $400,000 or so of attorney's fees. We're seeing him getting tagged with damages. E. Jean Carroll's got her second defamation trial that's coming up next week. But why can't those things move in parallel, right? Why can't justice happen in a courtroom, justice happen in Congress, and justice happen in the court of public opinion? Well, I'd say justice is happening in the courtroom. And, and by the way, Katie, you've practiced uh, law in a courtroom, and you know that Donald Trump is not being treated worse than any criminal defendant. He is being treated actually better. In fact, most defendants would be in custody uh, and have their bail revoked if they acted the way that Donald Trump uh, has acted. But what we're seeing, I, I believe, and we've been so frustrated and impatient that justice would never come for Donald Trump, that in the last year, this tapestry of accountability has been stitched together from the criminal cases to the civil cases. And it, I think, creates kind of this security blanket for our rule of law and, and for our democracy. And so if we can keep the faith in our rule of law and do what we've done since Donald Trump was elected in November 2016, which is mobilize and organize and show that through voting, not violence, what they would use, uh, that, you know, we can uh, restore justice in this country. That's how we do it. And as somebody who participated in one of the two impeachment trials of Donald Trump, I'm sure it takes a moment for you sometimes to have to think about how things could have been different, right? How things could have been so different for the United States, especially as we see the judicial system being used through Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to be able to try to get Donald Trump disqualified, if not already in some jurisdictions. Your thoughts about the fact, though, that there are some familiar faces that have been around through those impeachment trials of Donald Trump. They're still there in the halls of Congress, and they're still doing the dirty work for Donald Trump. We came so close with impeachment, with Republicans joining us, and we could have kept him from running again. Uh, of course, there's these cases out there uh, that may keep him off the ballot. But you know what? I think the, the sweetest victory, uh, the redemption for our democracy, is going to be uh, when the American people, particularly in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Georgia, and Arizona, show up and beat him at the ballot box. Uh, and that's where we're going to bury uh, MAGAism is that voters are going to show that we're not going away. We're not going to be intimidated. Uh, that on all the freedoms we care about, uh, we're going to show up and fight for them. And, and that they are a party that would rather rule than govern. They prefer violence rather than voting. And when it comes to any issue that matters, like the border or crime uh, or health care costs, they don't want the fix. They want the fiction. And if we're a party that wants to get things done, I feel very good about where this is going. So it's funny you use the word Congressman fiction because that's exactly what we've been talking about, which are the alternative facts. Donald Trump's alternative facts, the alternative facts of House Republicans, things that are not actually doing anything that's good for Americans at large. 
We are on the cusp of November 2024. It sounds like it's far away, but it's really not, as you and I both know. How does it work then, do you think, that the judicial system can actually be a stopgap to the demise of democracy before we actually are looking at things at the ballot box in November? Well, well first, again, we, we can't control the pace of the judicial system. And, and so what we can control, as I said, is what we do with the agency we have uh, as voters who hold Donald Trump accountable at the ballot box. And again, I, I think what you're going to find here is that, uh, you know, the redemption will be that whatever happens to Donald Trump uh, in the criminal trials or the civil trials, it will be because a jury of his peers made the decision. And so he won't get Trump justice, which is what he would meet out against any of his opponents. He will get American justice. And then we have to do our own sense of justice, as I said, when we go to the ballot box. And that's how we renew and write a new chapter for America in November.